we love to worship you. We love to be in your presence, O oh God. In your presence, there is freedom. In your presence, there is liberty, O oh God. Set us free from any stronghold that block our mind, knowing you closer, O oh God. Father, we thank you. We surrender everything. We commit our time into your hand. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, shout, amen, amen. The title of my sermon is, Follow Me. Everybody says, follow me. So let me start with the word of invitation from Jesus. The words that becoming the starting point of discipleship, right? And you know that word. That is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. If you look up at the screen, it says, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Church, this verse speaks about two things. That's why I highlight, I underline two parts. It speaks about two things. It speaks about the journey to follow Jesus and speaks about the destination the journey to follow Jesus and the destiny that God has for us to be the faces of men. So I would like to break it down into two, two parts to give us some clarity. That is, follow me, it is the journey that we need to embark on following Jesus. And if you see the second part, Jesus said, I will make you. Speaks about the destiny, the destination that God has for us to be the faces of men. Now, listen, the command Jesus gives to the disciple is, to all of us, is to simply focus on following him. Everybody say, following him. We just need to focus on this part, the first part, just to follow God. That's our job. Our job is to follow, and his job is to make. Our job, let me repeat it, our job is to follow, but his job is to make us. Transformation is not our job. His job is to transform us, to change us from the inside. We can change, but it is human effort. It's going to last for a while. But transformation that comes from the Spirit, that comes because of the work of the Spirit, it will last. So, I want to highlight our destiny is determined by our devotion to follow. Let's think through it again. Our calling is determined by our commitment to follow. So the following part, it is so important because we all have different paths of life, correct? We have different career paths in life. You can be a doctor, you can be a businessman, you can be an employee, you can be a housewife, you can be anything, but we have the same calling to be a free soul man. We have a different career in path, but we have the same calling in life. You can have a different journey of life, but we have the same destiny in life, that is to win souls for Christ. Amen? Follow me and I will make you. Our job is to follow. God's job is to make us. So now today, following Jesus means that we walk with the Holy Spirit. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that probably was easier for the 12 disciples to follow Jesus because they can see, they can touch, they can talk to Jesus. But what about us today? We cannot see Jesus today. We cannot touch physically Jesus today. But before Jesus ascended to heaven, he said this. I highlighted two weeks ago. He said this. I will give you another helper that is the Holy Spirit to be with you forever. And I highlighted before the word another helper. In Greek word, use the word alone. Alone means to be exactly the same type. The same type of person. Just as Jesus to the twelve disciple, so is the Holy Spirit to us today. So if the Bible says follow Jesus, today we follow 
the prompting and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can search, we can search the entire Bible from the front to the back, from the back to the front. It's all in regard to our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We always fall into two terms of two terminology, two biblical terminology. That is to walk in the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. Which is another word, it is the same thing as following Jesus. Let me show it to you the verse Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also what? Walk in the Spirit. One terminology. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Everything the Bible says about our relationship with the Holy Spirit is always fall within these two categories. It's to walk in the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. Now, church, I want, to, I want, you to, I want to bring attention to this point. I want you to understand that God gives us the Holy Spirit as a gift. Everybody say gift. As a gift to us at the point of conversion. The moment you believe Jesus, Holy Spirit is in you. When we believe Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit didn't come to our lives a few years after we mature in, in our faith. No, it is, it is immediately at the point of confession. But, okay, but to walk in the Spirit doesn't come automatically with our spiritual birth. Okay, it takes a while for us to understand. Let me repeat it to you. But to walk in the Spirit doesn't come automatically at the point of conversion with spiritual birth. Just as physical birth, after you come out from your mom's belly, we don't learn, we don't straight away walk in. How many of you, how many of you walk right after you came out from your mama's belly? Anyone? Nobody walk. When we were born into this earth. The same principle. We don't learn. We don't know how to walk in the spirit at the point of conversion, believing in Jesus. We need to learn to walk in the spirit. We need to learn to be led by the spirit. So in just a moment, I want to speak to you how we as a disciple can follow Jesus by walking with the Holy Spirit. We will touch that in a moment. Jesus too, when he was on this earth, he was walking in the Spirit and led by the Spirit. You know the Bible says, Jesus was led by the Spirit to the desert to be tempted by the devil. Whatever the reason is, you go and search, you go and study, but Jesus was by the Spirit. We were to walk in the Spirit and to be led by the we need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. Now, the good news is, believe in Jesus Christ. The good news is, you have the Spirit of Christ within us. How many of you say, Amen? Amen. We have the Spirit of Christ within us. We have the Spirit of Christ. And then when we learn to walk in the Spirit, that walk with the Holy Spirit will change how you spend your entire journey of life. Your walk with the Spirit will change your entire journey of your life. And also will change the direction. It's about journey and destiny. It will change the direction of your life. And no one can, I can guarantee you, no one can follow Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. No one. We need that Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, I will give you another helper, Holy Spirit. You cannot follow Jesus without the help of Holy Spirit. Today, I want to just share with you just two points. How many? Two points. Simple. But I guarantee you, it is meaty, it is solid food. If you want, write it down, you write it down. Probably when you see again, read again, ah, I need to do this. Okay, only two points today. 
So how to follow Jesus today is the word follow is F, right? So I, again, I just want you to be able to remember easily. So my, puto, my two point is how to follow Jesus is to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's all. Two points. Fellowship and to be filled with the Spirit. Let's take a look at the first one. Follow me. Okay, the first part of my sermon, follow me, is to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Church, how many of you attend the church and you, you wait until you finish the service? All of you, right? So, how many of you notice we hear a closing prayer for the service? Pastor Stephen, we, ha- we say this. May the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and what is it? The fellowship of Holy Spirit. Correct? May the love of God, the grace is belonging to Jesus. What about the Holy Spirit? It's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you forever. So, you know, the three divine person of Holy Trinity, the God, the Father, the God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, has its own role to play. Has its own role to play. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Father. We don't follow God, the Father. But we say we follow Jesus. What about the Holy Spirit? What about the Holy Spirit? We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We have, the Bible teaches us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. To have communion, communion with the Holy Spirit. The word communion means sharing and exchanging intimate thoughts with the Holy Spirit. Our feelings, we communicate. Our thoughts, intimate thoughts, we share it. That's to have communion. To have fellowship, meaning to have communion, intimate sharing of thoughts and feeling with the Holy Spirit. You know, now, the reason we don't pray to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit lives close, so close to us. He is within us. Because of that proximity, we fellowship, we fellowship and we talk to the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Romans chapter, in Roman chapter 8, verse 20 says, the Spirit help us in our weaknesses. We do not know how to pray. The Holy Sp- we don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We do not know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit help us to intercede, to pray to the Father. You see, the role of the Holy Spirit is to be with you, to, to, to fellowship with you, to know your struggle. You share with the Holy Spirit and He understands. He will help you. He is within you. We talk to the Holy Spirit. We converse with the Holy Spirit. He help you. Amen? Now, in order for us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the very first thing we need to do, and the key, I believe this is the key to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, that is to regard Him as a person to regard the Holy Spirit as a fellow person who lives within us. Understanding that the Holy Spirit is a person, a fellow person, you will begin to have a fellowship with him. If you treat him, treat Holy Spirit as it, as something, you will not talk to the Holy Spirit. All right? To understand The Holy Spirit, we need to break, the first thing, we need to break that mental stronghold about what we think about the Holy Spirit. Let me give it to you. The Holy Spirit is not a force within us. He is a friend within us. He's not a force. He's a friend. Holy Spirit is not a power within us. He is a person within us. The Holy Spirit is not a tongue that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
He is our friend. He is a person. The Holy Spirit is not flame. It's not a dove. It's not an oil. He is a person. And the proof that the Holy Spirit is a person is written in the Bible because he, he has a feeling. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has that emotion, has drive, has will. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit because he has, he has a feeling. And the Romans chapter 8, Holy Spirit has a mind. That's why he shared his thought with us. You know, church, when we think of God the Father, we have this so-called, uh, what do you call, a, a human physical body that represents God the Father. Right? For example, just as our earthly, earthly human Father who loves us, how much more our Heavenly Father will love us. So, when we talk about God the Father, we, we think about our earthly Father that is already loving us. So, we have that connection. Right? When we think about Jesus, we think about passion of the Christ which is the Jewish male, handsome, good-looking, good-built. So when we pray to Jesus, we think, oh, he's a Jewish man, he's a person. But all Christians confuse when it comes to the Holy Spirit. There is no physical being, physical human being represent the Holy Spirit. So when we pray to Jesus, we don't refer to Jesus as the Lamb, even though the Bible portrays Jesus as the Lamb of God. Right? Because there is that human representation of Jesus. And so is God. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, we don't have any. And we got confused. And so we start, start treating Him not as a person, but as it, as power, as force. Holy Spirit is all that, but He is first a person. So, now, you, when, you, when, you, when you, you may ask something like this, why didn't God give the Holy Spirit a physical body so we can relate to and we can talk to, we can follow the Holy Spirit? But I want to reveal one revelation today. Hold on. Slow down. Okay. Do you know why God didn't give a physical body to the Holy Spirit? Do you know why? Because, the truth to be told today, because you will realize that the Holy Spirit has a physical body. Really? Yes. The Holy Spirit has a physical body. He chose yours. He chose your physical body. He chose to live in your physical body. So let me refresh the word that says in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 6, that say, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the reason God didn't, at the beginning, didn't choose a physical body, because he will choose yours. That is why the reason why Christianity is about relationship, is about fellowship, it's not about religion. Christianity is about relationship. We have a constant relationship with God, the Spirit who lives within us. He is a person. Amen? To walk in the Spirit, the key to having a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, first and foremost, treat Him as a person. Treat Him as a person. So, God gives us unconditional love. Jesus gives us His grace. Holy Spirit gives us intimate relationship. A lot of us think the gift of the Holy Spirit is tongue, power, but the main gift, I think, is that relationship that we have, a constant fellowship we have 
with the Holy Spirit. He is the very present help in terms of your need. When nobody, nobody with you, everyone leave you, He is there with you. But we don't think, we don't realize He is within us. He is inside of us. How to walk, how to follow Jesus, how to walk in the Spirit, the very first thing, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Treat Him as a fellow person. You can talk to him. You can say good morning, Holy Spirit. You can say good morning before you say good morning to your wife. He is it in you. The moment you start talking, the moment you realize he is a person within you. How many of you today been a Christian, but we forget to converse with the Holy Spirit? The second one, how to follow Jesus, how to walk in the Spirit. The second one, as I mentioned, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's simply to be filled with the Holy Scriptures. Holy Spirit, Holy Scriptures. It's to be filled with the Holy Scripture. To have our heart and our mind to be filled with the Word of God. To be under influence of the Word of God. You know, there's some saying, no one can follow Jesus without the help of the Spirit. I said that. But following Jesus is all about denying the flesh desire and fulfilling what the Spirit desires. But we cannot, we cannot fulfill the Spirit desires if we are not influenced by the Word of God. Let me, let me share to you um, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 that says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what the nature desires. This is a proof also that the Spirit has mind. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. If we don't saturate our mind with the Word of God, we cannot keep up, church. We cannot keep up following Jesus. The Bible says no one can walk together unless they agree first in the beginning of their journey. We cannot walk with the Holy Spirit if we don't agree with the mind of the Spirit. Okay? The Bible wants to go this way and you want to go that way. You just can't walk together. You have to be in the same mind with the Holy Scriptures. Now, this is an extra I want to share with you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Walk in the Spirit so that, watch now, you will not fulfill the desire of the flesh. Okay, you can just read this and you forget about this. But this is the revelation that I want you to catch. Okay, Notice the first didn't say that you will not have the desire of the flesh. When you walk in the Spirit, the first didn't say you will not have the desire anymore. You will not have the lust. You will not have the temptation. No. The Bible says, the first say, walk in the Spirit you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. It's like, let me give you an illustration. It's like an itch. How many of you sometimes itchy in your body, in your back, whatever? You got an itch. Now, the desire of the flesh is like an itch. It was there. But walking in the Spirit gives us the power not to scratch that itch. We don't realize, sometimes we itch, it will be gone. It, it will, the itch will be gone. No, sometimes it will make it worse. Sometimes it will turn into a bleeding wound and hurt you. Walking in the Spirit gives us the power not to scratch because we are so influenced by the Word of God. Young and old, single or married, church attendees or ministers, myself included, our temptation can be from anywhere, anywhere. It can be from Instagram, can be from TikTok, can be from Facebook, can be from your phone, can be from your desktop, can be from YouTube, can be from anywhere. But the solution to the root of that problem is not to make the temptation go away. The solution to that problem, to the lust, to the flesh desire, to the temptation is not to make them disappear, but for us to walk in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the flesh desire. It is so important to be filled 
with the Holy Spirit. So let me let me let me ask my boys to just come up here real quick. Uh, let me ask Jordan and Jethro to come up. Let me show you and illustrate. Come on, boys, come on here. These two are my boys um, at home. I call them bro. Uh, bro, it's with B R U H, bro. All right. So I pay for for their food. I pay for school fee as well. They work for me today, right? So. Today, what I want you to do, I want to give them the illustration how to be filled with the Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, all right? Let me just, I want to give you this too, okay? I want to give you this cup. You hold this, and I want to give Jethro this cup, all right? So it's some sort of like a competition, and I want two of you, Jethro, you go to the left, make one round in the hall, and come back to the stage. You go one round from this side, and come back to this stage. It's some sort of competition, okay? You need to walk. It's a walk of life. It's a journey, right? The destination is on the stage. Ready? You get it? But I want to make sure Whatever I pass to you is intact. Come back intact. You ready? Get set and go. $100 from Pastor Stephen. Let's go. Don't waste my time. Come on. I want to see who finished faster. Who reached the stage faster. All right. All right. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. All right. Thank you, guys. Now, it's time for me to explain. Jethro came first carrying a cup. Jordan came late, carrying a full, a cup full of water, filled of water. Walking in the Spirit, being filled by the Spirit. Our focus, if you notice the two boys, Jordan's focus is on the cup, not to spill the water. Jethro's focus is on everywhere. He don't need to focus on anything. His focus is just to finish, to reach here early. That's it. But this is what I want to share with you. right? When our focus is to be filled with the Spirit, our walk is being led by the Spirit. When your focus is to be filled with the Spirit, your life, your walk, it does not matter whether you want to come late or you want to come second or you want to come last. Your job, your goal is not to win big, to reach the first. Your focus, your goal is to be filled with the Holy Spirit because you know you are being led by the Spirit. You catch this? So when our focus is to be filled with the Spirit, our walk you think you are losing things, but your focus in being filled, doing the right thing for God. And that what pleases God. It's not what you, you, you finish first, you win big this time. Your profit is bigger this time. It's not. What pleases God that you are being filled with the Spirit. Follow God and being, 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 do the right thing. How to walk in the Spirit, number one, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You talk to the Holy Spirit. The second one is to be filled with the Spirit. How to be filled with the Spirit? Filled with the Word of God. When you focus on the Word of God, your walk is being led by the, work, by, 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 by the Spirit of God. Amen? You're following this? Very simple. Now, let me go <laughs> to the second part. I can finish with this, go home and very happy and... Is my job is easier. But it's not about the job. It's about the calling, correct? So let me go to the second part. Jesus said, I will make you your job. Our job is to follow. But now comes to his job. He said he will make us a fishers of men. Now the question is, how does God make us to be a fisher of men to win souls? How? We all of us will say, I don't have it what it takes to be a physical man. But how God, how God, how does God make us to be a physical man to win soul? Now, 
The first point, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you will receive and recognize, everybody say this, the gift of the Spirit. Everybody say the gift of the Spirit. The more you fellowship with the Spirit, the more you will recognize there is the gift of the Spirit given to us. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. All this gift is for one thing and one thing only given to us. It is to minister to people. It's to win souls for Jesus. You know, when you have a close relationship, when you have intimate relationship, you will receive gifts, correct? That is logical. If you have boyfriend or girlfriend, you receive gift. How many of you have boyfriend or girlfriend before, but you didn't receive anything? Put up your hand. Oh, no, right? I will be sad for you. You will receive gift. The more we have fellowship, the more we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we realize, oh, there is the gift of the Spirit given to us. The gifts are given to us based on our fellowship with the Holy Spirit and based on our faithfulness to the ministry. We are faithful with one thing. The Holy Spirit who is within us, recognize, I give you another. Because you are good. You've been faithful. Well done, good and faithful servant. It's about the fellowship. Now, the second one. How God make you a free so man? The more you feel with the Holy Spirit, feel with the Holy Scripture, you will realize that there is this the fruit of the Spirit, the godly characters being more developed, more apparent in your life. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. There are nine gifts and nine fruits. A single fruit, but nine characters of the fruit. All right? Now, now, it's called the fruit of the Spirit for a reason. It's not the fruit of your own self-effort. It's not the fruit of our own flesh. It's not. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Let me give you an illustration. There is no such tree whose branch, okay, will work so hard to produce fruit because it's not the branch that produces the fruit. It is the tree. It's the fruit of the Spirit. You, have you ever seen the tree, if it were a branch, okay, a branch, okay? They will work so hard to pop a fruit. Nobody. The Bible says, John 15, you are a branch, all of us branch. You just need to remain connected to the vine. I am the one who produced the fruit. Come on now. It is the work of the Spirit. It's not the work of your flesh. All the godly characters about the fruit of the Spirit, it is not you who produce it. It is the Spirit. As a result of you being filled with the Spirit. So, Christianity is not a self-help that changes you for the better. It is, how many of you praise God for this? It is a spirit help that change you from the inside out. It is the spirit. The godly characters is the spirit who produces it. This is what I believe. This is what I believe. Jesus wants us to follow him so that he can make us to be someone who has both the gift and the fruit. The gift to win soul. The gift to be a fishers of men. But at the same time, he have the characters to embrace those who are already won for Christ. Uh, can I ask Jeannie to give me my Apple Watch that I give you? So, you know, when you have fellowship, I give something, right? I give gifts. So like uh, a year ago, on her birthday, in Bali, <laughs> I gave her this. 
Can you give me another one, the real apple? All right. One is called the gift. The other called what? The fruit. It's not apple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't find the fruit. All right. You got me. All right. So one is called the gift. And the other one is the fruit. The gift is used to ministers. Oh, it helps me to work. All right, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Now I'm ministering to you. I need to activate the gift of the spirit, the word of knowledge that I need to dig, the word of wisdom that I need to use when it's, as I'm speaking. The gift I use to minister to people, to win people, to bring people to Christ. But Listen, the fruit is the food that I need to have to feed the people. The fruit is not for me only. The food, the fruit is to feed the people. Now, I want to bring, I want to close with this. I asked for the, uh, the, the worship team to just come up. And on the stage, we need the gift. Of the stage, we need the fruit of the Spirit. On the stage, I need the charisma, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But of the stage, I need the loving kindness, gentle, self-control. At home, my family does not need my charisma, does not need my anointing. My family at home need me to be a loving father, the fruit. Understanding to them, gentle to them, self-control, not easily angered. I need both. You can be having the gift, but without the character to uphold what you perform. You can. But we need both. Jesus wants to make us to be someone who have both the gift and the fruit of the Spirit. You know the first encounter of Jesus with Simon Peter, uh, the first disciple, he said, follow me and I will make you a fishers of men. That's the first one. Fishers of men. And to be a fishers of men, I can give you gifts of the Spirit. And the last encounter of Jesus with the disciple, Simon, when he betrayed Jesus, Jesus rose from the dead, he encountered, he, he met Simon Peter, and then he didn't, Jesus didn't repeat, I'll make you a fisher of man. I will make you a real fisher of man. No. He tell you, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. He want us to have that fruit of the Spirit that not only you preach, not only you do your things on the stage, but you came down off the stage to the people who undeserve of our love, undeserve our attention, that you embrace them. That's the disciple of Jesus. To be like Jesus, to give grace to people. Amen, church? Let's just close with this. Let's pray. And to conclude very quickly, how to follow Jesus, we can walk in the Spirit. Start by having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Talk to Him, confess to Him. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Ask the worship leader to just sing a song, one song, the last songs, the chorus. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, oh I, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. I can see you now. As we sing this song, we worship. I can see the love in your eyes. 
as we worship we converse with the spirit we talk to the spirit raising up the broken to life thank you lord i can see you now i can see you as a person who lives within me you are the very present help in terms of me we thank you jesus for sending your spirit thank you for choosing us so god I want to pray to some of you in this room. Let every head bow, our eyes close. We thank you, Jesus, that we can see clearly there is this person who lives within us. I want to pray to some of you, for some of you in this room. Some of you have been searching for answers. Some of you have been searching for a way out. You've been crying for help. But as far as you can see, as far as your eyes can see you see nothing you see no breakthrough you see no solution you see no answers no help nothing today god is speaking to you through the word of god the answers might not coming from what you see with your eyes the answer might come from the one that you already have from within the holy spirit is within you Father, I pray for every person who need, who asks for your help, search for your help, cry out to you. Father, let the Holy Spirit, as you begin to converse with Him, talk to the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that I pray that they they can see what the direction, the prompting, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit of what to do. Father, I pray as they begin to to talk to the Holy Spirit, I pray that the Holy Spirit begin to show you and open your eyes to see beyond your problem. Amen. To change the perspectives toward your problem. He will change your attitude towards your problem. He will change your heart to face your mountain, to face your problem. Let the work of the Holy Spirit being done in it in you. Strengthen us, O oh God. I pray as all of you begin to converse with Him, talk to Him. There will be breakthrough happening this week. There will be transformation happening within us, then around us. Father, we thank you. Seal your word. Seal your word, God. In Jesus' mighty name.